Freight and shipping logistics company Grindrod reported that headline earnings per share decreased by 41% to 99.6 cents per share. Net income declined 32% to 530.9 million rand for the year ended December 2011. The company declared a final dividend of 29.5 cents a share for the year. Now, Grindrod has disappointed a lot of people, including the value managers out there that were betting their bottom dollar on the stock. And I love to be a contrarian and go where others fear to tread, but in this case, and as a Durban boy, I'm supposed to love Grinrod. But it's just, we're starting to see some things starting to come right for them. But at the core of what they are, Grinrod owns ships. And the, the, the problem is very simple. There is a global oversupply of ships, and we're talking the capsize and the like, the really, really big ships, and that is not going away. That, that oversupply Why is that not going away anytime soon? Because surely, as the world writes itself, then shipping demand will increase, and simple economics will apply. The biggest problem is you ordered the ship five years ago and it's getting delivered now. And, and that's the problem. Ships, I mean, Grinrod was, was absolutely winning in 2007 when ships they had ordered in 2002 at those prices were coming on stream. Now we've got the glut and there's still capacity coming onto the market. And that's the problem that's hitting them. And, and the driver of that capacity is China. Doing great. We're seeing growth there. Europe, probably a decade of little or no growth. America uh, doing all right, but, but not exactly roaring along. So we, we've got this huge capacity and we've got pockets pockets of growth, but not enough pockets of growth to really, really drive the, 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 their core business. I think in, in maybe five years' time, there'll be a different company, but for now, shipping is their focus. How come so many people have got this wrong? Because value managers for a long time were beating this drum, Grindrod, Grindrod, Grindrod. How come they couldn't see what, what you are telling me right now? Uh, and uh, Two years ago or so, three years ago, I was certainly looking at Grinrod and I, I didn't buy it. And it was probably as much to do with luck as to do with skill. I, I think that the, the capacity coming on was perhaps ex expected more, capa sorry, less capacity coming on. Didn't fully anticipate that coming on. Um, Rand strength hurts them because they charge in dollars for their, for their ships. And obviously, we saw the Rand down in the 740s today. They had the exchange rate year on year was a five cent difference, pretty much flat. But if we see more current strength going forward that can hurt and we just I think the thinking behind Europe was we would see some growth the truth is Europe is a zero growth nation for a decade or more Mashima technically can you give us any better news <laughs> not really um, the positive is at least it's holding on its it's hold firm, firmly on its support trend line but Grinard really needs to bridge its one year resistance trend lines to show us some bullish initiative therefore it needs to at least trade above 1470 or else this sideways trend could continue for the medium term so until we see that, that's when we would then anticipate some upside to the 1940 level. It could encounter a bit of resistance there, but if that level is bridged, that would then assist Grinrod to complete a 100% retracement from its 2008 highs. But those steps need to be, at least those levels need to be bridged for us to see some bullish initiative. It's RSI still looking bearish. So until that resistance trend line or that 1470 level is bridged, Grinrod will still be consolidating. What could be the value unlock here? What could push the stock through that 1470 resistance? I think one of the, the, the one of the prime assets is Maputo, uh, and the, the coal terminal, and, and, and what we're seeing, coal of Africa is exporting through there. I mean, South Africa can produce more coal than we can export. Richards Bay coal terminal is a bottleneck, both the terminal and the railway line to it. The, 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 the Maputo coal terminal, they're doing significant ramp up in that space. Huge capital injection. A huge capital injection. 2 billion rand from, from Remgo and they said we're not going to use this to pay off debt, we're going to use it to build the coal terminal. The deal with the Vitol Group who's a, 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 one of the world's largest uh, energy traders who will take a stake there, again give them some capital also gave us an indication of what that coal terminal is worth uh, and, and tell us that it underpins currently at about 20% of their market cap with a lot of cash there that coal terminal is going to be big but it's going to be a process. Firstly we've got to get it built or they've got to get it built, then they've got to get the coal there and the mines then have to ramp up that production. Coal of Africa is constantly being beset with problems. I think that's going to be one of their jewels. And down the ro down the road, they're going to have a shipping component. They're going to have a, they're going to have the deal with with the energy trading. I really like that. They're going to have Maputo coal terminal. But those are all still down the line. Well, it's all down the line. When Europe does recover, if you let's put it this way, if you were looking ahead and you thought Europe is definitely going to recover in a year and a half, would you buy into Grindrod? 
12 months down the line? I think that's a great question. I think if you are bullish on Europe, if you think that Europe can start delivering solid growth, and, and, and not, not forget the defaults and stuff, if we can start seeing solid growth out of Europe uh, during 2013, even if in the second half of 2013, I think Grinrod is worth definitely having a look at because that will absorb a lot of capacity. There will still be an oversupply, but it will absorb a lot of the capacity. And Grinrod got their boats, their ships at cheaper prices. They can be a little more aggressive there. So I think it's a good point. Depending on your view on European growth, perhaps plays into your view on Grinrod. And my view on, on European growth is nothing, therefore Grinrod doesn't Same good Grinrod me. is not good in your book. Just coming back to the capacity issue. Obviously, if uh, there's no demand for shipping, then it's very difficult to sell excess ships. That's the status quo. There's, there's no chance, otherwise they would have to give them up almost fire sale to, to reduce their capacity. That's not a strategy that they can follow. It's something which I pondered. At the moment, the new ships are coming on board and, and, and you've, you've, you've paid for them and, and you've paid old prices and the like. And, and couldn't they go and they've, they've got a, a very, very modernized fleet. Couldn't they go and, and, and fire sale it? Because it, it, there's a cost to, to have a ship and essentially to mothball it and keep it somewhere waiting for you. Maybe you could even strip it up for metal. Now, the metal part apparently doesn't work. The number are terrible. The fire sale, I'm imagining they must have looked at it. This is a board of directors who've been through this before. This is not the first time they've been in this position. They must have looked at it and said, you know what, the numbers simply don't add up. It's not a case that Grinrod's going to go insolvent. That isn't a risk for them at all. It's a tough spot for them. It will turn, it will come back in their favor, and they're going to hold through it. And when it happens, Grinrod is going to be brilliantly positioned. It's the when's are going to happen. It's a waiting game. Mishima, hot or not? <laughs> Definitely not. It's cold. In this case, it will remain cold until that 1470 level is breached. And uh, it's a waiting game, but you can't see any warmth in, in this. I, I, I can't see any warmth, and, and I did wonder if I should sit on the fence a little bit, and then I thought, nope, no fence sitting here. I've got to say, Grinrod, not hot. If you want shipping exposure, Trendcore, who do the container business, much better space there. There isn't a capacity problem. In fact, there's a, almost a shortage of containers, ironically. So for me, Grinrod, not hot.